This video is about the conceptual reasons why idealism is not a good way to try and convince atheists that God exists. That is, why idealism will fail to correct the atheist even before the quantum woo is wheeled out. <laughs> Idealism is the claim that for every X, if X exists, then X is essentially mental. That is, that at the most fundamental level of existence, the level of the most basic, durable and independent of things, there are only things with first-person phenomenal qualities, such as those of conscious experience, or that are in aboutness relations, such as those which beliefs and desires stand in, to that which is believed or desired. A typical argument for idealism looks like this. The first line is the uncontroversial assumption that there is some X such that X exists. The second line is the first premise, which claims that for every X, if X exists, then X is thought of. The third line is deduced from the first two, via modus ponens. It claims that there is some X such that X is thought of. The fourth line is the second premise, which claims that for every X, if X is thought of, X is essentially mental. The fifth line is the conclusion of idealism. It is deduced by means of a conditional introduction rule in which an assumption of the antecedent from line 1 is combined with premises from line 3 and 4 in order to entail the consequent, that X is essentially mental. Note that the truth of this conclusion ultimately rests upon the premises, lines 2 and 4, and upon them alone. The problem with this argument when it is weaponized against atheists is in the analysis of its premises. Both premises take the form of a conditional if-then statement. Remember that in order to formally introduce such a statement, one needs an assumption of its antecedent, which, together with a hypothetical premise, entails its consequent. So, in the case of the first premise, we need an assumption that something exists, and an hypothesis which would, alongside it, entail that everything that exists is thought of. In the case of the second premise, we need an assumption that something is thought of and an hypothesis which would, alongside it, entail that everything that is thought of is essentially mental. The argument as stated yields the required assumptions. However, the hypothesis required for the first premise, if it is to honour its universal quantifier, entails omnicognizance. Whilst the hypothesis required for the second, if it is to honour its universal quantifier, entails a mental substance. The premises for idealism thus require an omnicognizant mental substance. The problem is that an omnicognizant mental substance is precisely the kind of thing about which atheists are typically rather sceptical. Thus, the atheist may well deny the very premises upon which idealism rests. She need only assert, as she is entitled to in her reasonable doubt about an omnicognizant mental substance, that there remain possible situations in which things exist without being thought of, and in which things are thought of without being essentially mental. With its premises thus falsified by counterexample, the argument for idealism is not cogent, and the atheist thereby remains at liberty to ignore its conclusion. Idealism, then, is very poorly placed to convince atheists that their doubts about the existence of God are misplaced, including those atheists who, in being violently set against their own doubts, affect fundamentalism. Thank you. For listening.